And how uh, how old were you when you picked that up? Um, probably like fourteen. I started playing. Like me and my brother started playing at the same time. Oh wow, nice. And uh, do you play in any bands and pick up the guitar in any bands, or was it a different instrument or? Um, yeah, so my brother was in this band and their bass player quit and like I already jammed on their songs and stuff. So I was like 15 and he's like, hey, do you want to, you know, do you want to join? And I'm like, sure. So I started playing bass in that band for, I don't know, probably like two years. Oh, wow. What kind of, um, what, what was like the, like the genre of like metal stuff that you were doing in that band? um it was more like rock so like before i joined like their first album was like kind of like punk influence which i wasn't into um so all the riffs that i wrote for it were like pretty much like down sounding riffs like super southern rock um so we kind of went that direction um we had a singer who would like sing the verses and then scream or sorry the other way around scream verses and sing the choruses and stuff oh wow and uh did you have any albums with them we recorded uh like an ep at san francisco state so we went and recorded i think three songs there but i don't know where they ended up so we had we had cds and shit but that's sick yeah i'd love to get my hands on one of those see what (laughs) yeah i did so uh i would just do like a lot of bass slides in place of squeals because i can't do squeals on bass you know yeah so there's definitely a lot of mm, going yeah, I saw the, you showed me the, I think you, you either posted it or you showed us the picture of you with the with the long hair playing the bass. I just oh, picture. yeah. I was yeah. like, that's crazy. Yeah, we played a bunch of shows, and like I said, I was only 15, so a lot of them were 21 and up, so I couldn't get into my own show. <laughs> so I had to, like, sneak in and then play. Um, so that was pretty funny. And one time this guy's like, hey, I didn't see your ID. And I was like setting up on stage. And I'm like, hold on, man. Like, I got to set this stuff up. And I'm just like pretending to do shit because I was already ready. So I had to just like pretend to do stuff till we started playing. <laughs> so he didn't kick me out of my own show. Yeah. Was everyone else in the band over 21? Were you the only one that was underage there? Yeah. My brother was like 21, uh, 20, I don't know, somewhere in that area, 23. Um, and then literally the rest of the dudes were like 30. Oh geez. Yeah. Was it was it long after that that you dropped the bass and started picking up guitar full time or was it pretty quick? Um, well I played guitar at that time. I didn't I didn't play bass at all, so I had to like use my brother's bass and like so I just played bass for them because they needed it. Um but I also quit playing guitar for like probably four years. Uh yeah, to- yeah that's crazy. What was uh what was the first guitar you got? Um, it was like a piece of shit knockoff Stratocaster, like a Squire. So oh, I had, um, yeah, my brother had a red one. Yeah, we all got to start with something crappy. Yeah, you got, like- it was pretty shitty. Um, and my brother played like way more than me. He got way better than me. And uh, so he was better than me for a really long time. And I was just kind of like, yeah, that's his thing. Fuck that. So I went and played drums for a long time. Did he uh did he teach you like how to play guitar or did you kind of teach yourself or not really no we both just taught taught ourselves oh wow that's uh, and you didn't have anything like you didn't have as much YouTube or stuff like where there's like millions of tutorials up on the internet these days no yeah I mean, I'm sure there were but I just like I didn't I don't know I didn't do that yeah it wasn't as mainstream now you can pretty much learn anything you want on the internet. Right, yeah, like that that thing I posted today, I was working on that last night from that Rick Graham. Yeah. His tutorials are super cool. Yeah. And uh, who were, like, some of your your big influences to pick up the guitar and that influence you're playing style? Uh, definitely Dimebag Daryl is probably number one. Um, same with my brother. Like, my brother has a whole portrait of Dime on his leg. Um, yeah, like, his whole cap is covered. Um yeah, definitely, definitely Dimebag influenced me to play guitar. Yeah, that, that's crazy. Yeah, Dimebag is insane. But uh, you should totally post something about that. If you have a video of one of your shows or any audio of some of your old recordings, you should totally post that. Yeah, dude, the riffs are still usable. I could cover, I could cover some of them. That would be cool. 
Yeah, that'd be sick. Um, our singer is uh, his name's Gustavo. He's in a band called Head Crusher, and they're like super big in South America. Oh, I think I've heard about them. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, when you you're one of the seem to be one of the biggest Instagram guitarists out there, at least for the ones that don't cover Metallica every day. Uh, when did you <laughs> when did you jump on that Instagram train and start posting your covers? Um, so. I would write music all the time and then I was getting kind of just like frustrated with writing all the time and then just doing nothing with it. And, uh, I posted a couple covers like on Facebook and stuff and like my friends and family would be like, Oh, cool. And it got like, you know, 40 views. And I was like, man, that's cool. Like 40 people watch this. Um, and I was actually talking to a distributor at my work and he's like, dude, my friend like makes makeup tutorials. She just like shows how to do makeup and she has like, I don't know, 500,000 followers and she makes money on it now. And he's like, you should do the same with guitar and you should do it and you should do it. And he like, he kind of bugged me into it. And I'm like, you know what, fine. I'll start using Instagram that way. And then it just kind of took off from there. Yeah, it's crazy. And um, was, I know you're endorsed by EMG, uh, Serpent King Guitars. Aren't you endorsed by a, a cable company too? Yeah, Covenant Cables. Yeah, when did you get, uh, how big were you? When did you get your first endorsement? Um, I think my first endorsement was uh, Lore Marin. They're like a clothing company out of England. Um, and I was pretty much rapid fire hitting up everybody. And they were someone that was like, you know, we'll give you free clothes to endorse our company. Um, so I started with them and then Savage came after that. So Savage was one of the first ones. Um, and Bob from Savage was pretty much just like, hey, I do like a hundred dollar buy-in for my uh, my artists. And, uh, and I'm like, you don't have a fucking hundred dollars to spend on picks right now. Mm -hmm. um, so he's like, he was willing to work out a deal with me and he was pretty much just like, all right, we'll buy uh, like a $20 t-shirt and I'll just give you free picks. And I'm like, cool. Wow. So, so that's how that started. Um, and then I think EMG was after that. And then... Yeah. And then Covenant, and then uh, Serpent King Guitars. Yeah, how'd you? Did you hit up EMG like multiple times, or did they deny you at first, or what was that like getting endorsed by them? No, I just thought like, you know, fuck it, like. And then I started encouraging like pretty much everybody to do it because it seemed like it was pretty streamlined, you know. Um, um, I don't really know. I mean, I think it was just part of that like rapid fire thing. Like I said, I was pretty much hitting up everybody, and they took. I don't know, maybe a month to answer. Uh, and then when they answered, I was just like, holy shit, you know? Uh, but it's it, honestly, it seems like they endorse anyone with a big enough social media presence. So I was under the impression that they checked me out and they were like, oh, this guy's cool, you know? But I think they were just like, sure. Yeah. Yeah, because everyone's getting endorsed by EMG now. Mm -hmm. Half of I mean, <laughs> right. So yeah, I, I feel like I was one of the first ones, but I definitely encouraged everybody else to do it too because, I mean, why not? Fuck it. Yeah. And uh, how many followers did you have? Because I think as long as long as I've been following you, you've been endorsed by EMG. Um, I think I was at like three or four thousand. Oh wow. Oh, so that's not like that's pretty big, but that's not like when people think an endorsement, they think they have to be huge and really mainstream. Uh -huh. Yeah, because I've seen people with like, I don't know, 1,000 who are endorsed by them. Yeah, that's insane. Uh, what kind of, what's probably your favorite guitar that you got right now? Honestly, probably my red, this guy. <sighs> yeah, it's probably the most known one. Yeah, the quilt cool top. I fucking love it. I feel like it plays best. And then second is my Serpent King. Yeah, I, lo I love that Serpent King guitar. I love a black one of those. Yeah, dude, Ebony Ebony fretboard. Um, I love the white EMGs. It's just the, the matte finish on it is still fucking weird. Yeah. Oh, because all your guitars are like the glossy finish. Mm -hmm. I don't have a guitar with a matte finish. I kind of like to get one, though. It's pretty fucking weird, man. I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, that's cool. But like the neck is matte finished too, so it's like oh weird. Yeah, because I have some some of my Jacksons have unfinished necks, but they have that thin layer where it makes it kind of smoother. So yeah, I've never right. played finished neck, I don't think. 
Yeah, it's something to get used to, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Does it does it like um like you can't really get as many smudges on it. Like with a gloss guitar, it gets smudged up really easily. No, but like honestly, like if I'm wearing like a, a shirt and I like rest my arm on it too long, it does get like it wipes off immediately, but it gets kind of like it gets like dirty. It's weird. Yeah. Like uh like it gets a lot of dust on it. Yeah. Well, I mean, like you can see like the black on it of where something like rubs on it. It's weird. So there's no smudges or anything, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have it right here. Cause I just recorded that Rick Graham video right here. Yeah, I think it's so sick. Yeah, those yeah. what kind of what kind of bridges on that? I don't know. Oh, oh, I only saw the I saw the part where you rest your hand and I thought that was it for a second. Oh no no. That thing is really nice. I really want to try a, a matte finished guitar now and see if it's actually more comfortable. Um, I don't know. It was weird. Um, my next one is going to be uh, one of those custom pulsars, like his, uh, his Les Paul shape. Yeah, those are sick. Are you going to get that? I think you – did you mention you were going to get, like, the black and purple kind of quilt on it? Um, I haven't decided on the color yet, but – but yeah, I'm definitely gonna do some kind of quilt top. Now, is yeah. that gonna be like a like a signature, like you have your name on it on the site and people can buy it, or is it just gonna be a custom? No, I think it's just a custom. We never really discussed it being a signature. Um, I'm gonna see if he can put M Pro guitar on the headstock though. Um, That'd be pretty sweet. Just because you know, fuck it. But yeah, it's not a signature or anything. Yeah, that's sick. And um. With the whole Instagram covers, uh, with everyone covering Metallica, do you do you feel like it's harder to almost get big not posting the same band that's super popular every day? Or yeah, I mean, I feel like there's a market for not doing it, and like Peyton said, like it's cool to hate on Metallica now, which um, I don't know. Like we we kind of talked about it, but I feel like. Bef if, before I had Instagram, if you asked me about Metallica, like, oh, do you like Metallica? I'd be like, yeah, they're cool, whatever. I just, I don't like those 40 pages of, that's literally all they cover over and over. Like I've, I've seen those covers done perfectly, and I've seen them done terribly. So it's just like, I don't care anymore, you know? Yeah. Um, and I'm seeing more and more Pantera covers, and like, that's unfortunately, like, I try to post less Pantera now because I feel like, I'm at risk of being in the same boat as that. So like if everyone starts covering Pantera, I don't want to I don't want to do that either, you know. Yeah. I think I think the Metallica covers are are cool if you're not posting Ender Sandman, Master of Puppets, nothing else matters over and over like I want to see some of the underground songs played. Yeah, that's fair cuz I mean, like I said I'm pretty ignorant to like newer Metallica stuff, so it's cool for me to watch that and be like, "Oh, you know, I've never heard this song before." Or um and like people like 60 Second Metal and Taylor Riff who are posting songs that they genuinely like, I don't have a problem with that. I don't like it when I feel like they're covering it just because they know it will do well, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. it's just like, I'll fucking okay. It. Yeah. Yeah, like uh, as much as I rip on it, like the whole Metallica IG thing, I think like Taylor Riff posts a pretty big amount of Metallica and I love it because he, he plays it really well like if it's played well it's pretty enjoyable but yeah not. yeah he's a great player and like he already has like twenty thousand followers so all those people are kind of wanting that from him so if he just stopped doing it i think they'd be pissed off yeah yeah he's I, get, I get mad at the smaller accounts who just that's all they do it gets frustrating yeah i mean if you're if you're really trying to get big and up there then sure post metallica every day but if you want to be original it's a bit harder yeah, it, it's cool to idolize someone, but I don't like it when they have their guitar all down and they have the fucking yeah. snake butt and they wear the fucking ring. It's like, okay, man, like, I look, I love Dimebag. Do you see me with a fucking, don't, Chugs, don't you say it, you bitch. Do you see me with a red beard? Do you see me with a dyed red beard? No. You know what I'm saying? Like, if I dressed exactly like Dime, it'd be fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. The the camo cargo shorts with the, the ripped yeah. off you button up shirts. Yes, it's, it's it's weird, man. So it's not just Metallica. I don't like it when... It's not that I don't like it, like, do your own thing, but I 
it gets boring to watch someone do the same thing over and over and over. Yeah. Regardless, regardless of what it is, you know. What would you say, like, um, if not one, like a few of your top favorite bands are right now to just listen to or just play or? Um. Well, like Pantera is one of my favorites, obviously, and they've influenced my playing a lot. But I don't listen to Pantera that much. I've been listening to a shitload of Machine Head. Um, trying to listen to like more stuff on the newer albums that I didn't really get into. Uh, Children of Bodom, Lamb of God. I like The Sword. Their old stuff is killer. Um, and then uh, this band called Raunchy. They have a lot of good stuff. I'll have to check them out. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you mentioned Machine Head listening to the newer stuff. What do you honestly think about the new album? Because it's getting loads and loads of hate but i think it's it's really the good songs are really overlooked on it well for sure even i even i overlooked it because like when the new album came out i kind of started on a couple tracks and uh was just like not feeling them so then when i started any new track i was just like shit next shit yeah. you know i kind of went through the whole thing i was like well what the fuck was that um but then after I saw them live, they played a couple of the songs live, and I was like, oh, well, those are cool. So I went back and listened, and um, yeah, man, there are just some really not not good ones on there that kind of threw the other ones under the bus. Um, but yeah, like I said, like Beyond the Pale, Screaming at the Sun, those ones are super cool. Yeah, like I think I, I first heard, like, um, I think I actually saw the video of Rob playing Bastards acoustic. Mm -hmm. I was really confused i was like i don't really know what this is so i heard that when the full version came out and i think i heard um razor blade smile the really weird rocky sounding lemmy tribute thing and i was just like really confused so i just dismissed everything else and said the whole album was crap but there's really some killer tracks on it yeah absolutely i think i'm gonna cover uh, screaming at the sun pretty soon yeah totally how do you, speaking of that, how do you go about learning a song that's not like, like I know it's tough for me to go learn a song if there's not tabs out there for it. Because I've, I've looked up YouTube tutorials and tabs for some of those newer songs and they're nowhere to be found because it's, it's new and no one's done it yet. Mm -hmm. um, well, for, for songs like that, like the second I hear it, I can go, okay, I know how to play that because it's simple enough that I've heard enough machine head songs and i've been playing long enough that i can kind of know where it's supposed to be and i kind of can guess you know but if it's a if it's a song like i don't know like like how i just played now we die i tried to figure that out first there's too many consecutive notes that are you know close together and like so i had to look at the tabs for that one and sometimes the tabs are wrong but they'll give you a nice framework you know what i mean yeah uh, so pretty much just listening to it and trial and error, just play along with it and just eventually figure it out. Yeah, I think I, I even looked at the tabs for Now We Die because I like that song a lot. And it was, it's really a really tricky song. I was like, it was really stumping me. I still can't even really play it that well. Yeah, I had no problem with going up, you know, like, da -da 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 -da. but then going back down, I was like, fuck this. With the, it's like the octave chord slides in like the, in the, the chorus and the verse riff that really are just like confusing for sure um but yeah that's that's what me and chris had to do for our aesthetics of hate solo collab we would literally just facetime each other and be like i think it goes like this and he's like no i think it goes like this and we would just like argue and figure it out yeah yeah that's a that's another really tough song at least the the solo part is pretty tough yeah because every tab was wrong <laughs> Yeah, so we just uh, had to figure it out. You got to see uh, Machine Head on the not only the last tour, but the last show with Phil and Dave. Mm -hmm. that yeah. A, that's a pretty crazy thing to think, oh, this is the last time I'll be able to see them live. Right, yeah, it was definitely really weird. And then, like, everybody was really emotional afterward because it was just, like, super, I don't know, like you said, like, the last show. And so, yeah, I feel like they went extra hard for it. So it was really cool to see. Yeah, I think it's cool that they still kept the cool, the the tour going, and if I think I, I saw them on the there was only three shows after the one in Tucson that I went to, and it, they really did go all out, and it was still a lot of effort put into it, which I thought was really cool. 
yeah it was really cool man and like my fiance is into like ska and punk and stuff like that she doesn't really like heavier music as much um and after we saw machine head like i catch her listening to machine head all the time now yeah so she, she likes machine head now and it's pretty funny i mean they kind of got something at least for most people that like rock and metal and stuff like that for sure i mean there's definitely some weird songs in there but a lot of good stuff and uh what kind of what kind of like amps and setup are you running um so i have emg 8166 and everything um on my next centurion or i mean my fucking uh pulsar i want to get uh the 5766 mm -hmm. uh, but right now just straight into my black star id core 100 that's it nothing in between no everybody shits on me because I don't, <laughs> I don't use pedals or anything like that um and all my videos with the backing track i use bias effects so i just run my guitar into my focus right focus right into reaper and then uh i go to youtube and find whatever track it is or a backing track i convert it to an mp3 open that up in reaper uh and then record one guitar all the way right one guitar all the way left and uh and that's pretty much it and then just kind of mix it and then i record the video and sync it all up is that a is that a lot of work or is it pretty easy to do um dude peyton had to help me 60 second middle had to help me out a lot just figuring out how to get all that shit set up um dialing in your tone with bias takes a really long time because there's so many fucking options um and then syncing it up is a pain in the ass what apps to use and mixing it was a pain in the ass because it like it sounds fucking studio level in your ears uh and then once you've rendered it emailed it and then play it through instagram and then you're playing it through your shitty ass phone it just it loses pretty much everything and doesn't doesn't sound at all like it did when you were recording so it's really you got to just like experiment and find out at the end um so yeah it's a pain in the ass that's why i do some of these like rick graham where i just i put the gopro there and then and then just record through my black star because that's if i'm feeling lazy i don't have time to do that shit. yeah and uh what kind of which amp are you using as a which amp model are you using when you use bias do you use a different one or do you usually use the same one um it's usually i think i think it's like a it's seriously i think it's a 55 or a 5150 like ripoff one and I, I just do the same thing i put like a little bit of overdrive on it um and that's pretty much it yeah the, and those those even those black star id 4100 i was at guitar center the other day picking up strings and that thing that thing was killing it sounded like really good which i was surprised because i usually don't like a lot of solid state amps but that thing was killer sounding yeah dude that i did a shitload of research because i almost bought that um 6505 plus one tall combo the pv um <laughs> instead of this guy because they're like the same price around the same time um but this one has built in like octave reverb delay chorus all that shit built in um and the reason i got rid of my line six was when me and chris were doing that collab and it was honestly just that one time where i was listening in the headphones and we were going back and forth on aesthetics of hate so i'm doing the he's doing it too just my amp sounded like it was in a fucking video game next to his yeah i was like all right last straw i gotta get rid of this shit so yeah, yeah i did a bunch like a thousand dollar Marshall JC made hundred and all track stuff. And you got the, the line six combo. Mm -hmm. but I got a line I got a pretty good tone out of it. So fuck you, Jay, if you watch this long, eat my shit. Um so yeah, I got a pretty good tone out of it, but it, this black star is way better. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Doom's still using his line six, so yeah. Can't really, can't really make fun of it. Well, at least Jay doesn't make fun anymore. Yeah, yeah. He he did love those memes though. He needs to bring those back to start posting those on his story. Yeah, I sent I sent the one that Chris made to that uh the chat the other night and he didn't even laugh at it. <laughs> I don't even think he saw it. I think I think he's scared to get uh get banned again, so he doesn't want to play with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean if they ban you for sending that stuff in a private chat, that's pretty weird. Well, no, I meant putting it on your story. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. see, his, his, the way his account was connected to Facebook, he had to get a whole new account because 
mm-hmm. thought Instagram was messing with his engagement for posting that stuff on Facebook. It's pretty yeah. stupid. Shout out Jay Black Guitar. Yeah, definitely go follow him, his new account. Shout out Hannah Music X. Shout out Ant underscore metal. I don't I don't see don't, call, don't get, but get there's all your tags and we can't shout you out, you know. Yeah. And then you start shouting people out and you forget someone and they get all butthurt at you. Yeah, exactly. That's shout out I'm... shout out guitar chugs, man. Yeah. Shout out M Pro Guitar. The guy, yeah. I, you're in my story twice today because I put the telling people that you're going to be in my YouTube like later tonight. I'll probably post this. Well, you're in my story twice too. Yeah. Because you, you did this wheel challenge kind of. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I just, I just literally the day before you posted that blocked off the Floyd on the dime guitar because it was just too much of a pain to mess with. How did you, how did you do that? Uh, I brought it, well, I was gonna do it myself, but I brought it uh, to the, my guy at the guitar shop, which to get a, a new Seymour Duncan put in the neck of it to match the bridge pick. And then I I told him before that I was gonna block it off, so he did it for free. He put um, you can put I think five springs in the back of a Floyd Rose to give it more tension to make it a bit mm-hmm. tougher. So he put uh, extra spring. So there's four springs in it right now, and then. Uh, you stick like a, you measure a block of wood and you stick it back there and the pressure from the Floyd Rose just keeps it wedged in there. So when you're changing oh. things, it doesn't, it doesn't move at all. Just, it's like. Huh. A leg. Well, honestly, man, that's my biggest problem with my, uh, my Dean is like keeping it in tune because there's only three springs in the back. And then uh, one of the screws is at like almost a 45 degree angle. So one of them goes in right and the other one goes in like all fucked up. So basically, I think if I get heavier gauge strings and tune it lower, it will like balance itself out and I can fix it. But like for now, I pretty much can only use it for whammying. Or uh, like I said, if I record with my Scarlet Focus Right, I can use whatever guitar I want for the video because it doesn't fucking matter because I'm not plugged in. Yeah. So like that's what I did on that Cemetery Gates video. I wasn't even, like, I didn't even use that guitar. Oh, well, oh, so you used it for the video, but you were recording with a different guitar. Yeah, and then like when I hit that kind of uh, like that kind of dime school thing, I just bent up on the high E and then hit the B and kind of came down so it sounded like that. And then uh, on my on the video, I kind of pretended to whammy it and it, it timed out and it looked right. Yeah, that's, I never even thought about that. Uh, but yeah, yeah. definitely. Was a, does it have one of those um, like the licensed Floyds on it? Not the real Floyd. It's like licensed by Floyd Rose. No, I think it's a real one. I'm not sure, though. Because I know if you have um, the licensed Floyds, it's, they're just a nightmare to keep in tune. And um, if you're going to put heavier strings on it, that's also another nightmare because it's going to mess with the tension and pull the, sh- the bridge way back before it's... I just blocked it off, so now I can change tunings and strings without a hat. Yeah, it sure is a pain in the ass, man, but I, it it's frustrating, though, because, like, any video I do with that guitar gets like insane views, but I can't, but I can't use that yeah. guitar. Yeah, they all like all the Dime School videos have like at least twenty k views. So people love right. them. All. Yeah, but then, but then again, it's I run the risk of becoming that guy. So I've gone to do those videos before and been like, I I don't want my followers to just be like, cool. He's doing that again, like you know. Yeah, have you thought about getting another guitar with a Floyd Rose, or is it not something you want? with nope <laughs> i'm good no i think i'm good i mean if you have a dime guitar you have to have the floyd on it whether it's just for looks it's, or that's right chugs i agree yeah i mean i would play this guitar all the time in the summer when it was it was um because i got it back in new york my dad picked it up from a friend his old bandmate for like super cheap next to nothing and um because the weather is way different there. They have way more, more humidity than Arizona. It's not as hot. So when it got on the plane to ship over here, when I came back, it was just a nightmare trying to keep it in tune. Yeah, yeah, I get that. In the second restring, when I, I, ha- I actually had a friend restring it for me because I didn't even know where to start with restringing it. And then after that, I think he, he, set it, he set it up wrong or something, or the bridge was too far back in the body. So I would hit it and the string would hit down the pickup and make like a scratchy noise. So oh. I just never played it as much. And I was always like bummed out about it. 
Yeah, and um, I don't remember what I was going to say, but uh, do you think it's like almost like do you sometimes think when you're mixing the bias stuff, like you're like, this is just too much work for a one minute Instagram video? Um, yeah, that, and, and like that's I try to give advice to people all the time and they're kind of like, oh, I don't have time for it. And like, oh, I'm like, dude, just pick up your guitar and hit record and do something because in a week that video is gonna be gone forever and no one's ever gonna see it again you know so when i do those videos it's just kind of for like my followers who actually like my shit and for me too because it's fun and it sounds way better so like i'm pretty much having fun with it when i do that if i just need to post something then like i said i'll just record through my black star if i don't have time um but yeah sometimes i've spent Okay, this oh my fucking god. Do you remember that Britney Spears video I did? Yeah. So I did the fucking bass line and it was actually difficult to learn. I did like three layers of guitars, different tones, all kinds of shit, and then fucking bias or it was Reaper crashed on me. I lost everything. And I had been doing it I had been doing it for like an hour and a half, so I had to fucking redo everything. So the second time I just didn't give a shit. So it came out way less cool but i was just like fuck it i, I mean i already did this so i might as well finish it it's so, great, so no one's gonna care if it sounds great yeah people didn't like it but i did <laughs> did it did it get a lot of views or was it kind of a big flop no no one gave a shit but you know i've been meaning to do that one so i thought it was funny was it yeah was it just like a like a comedic banger well yeah i think i thought it would sound cool with guitar and it did yeah, I think that's that's another thing, a good thing to do is take something that doesn't usually have guitar and kind of make it have guitar and just put your own twist on it. Yeah, I mean, because like I've done, like my rap ones don't do well, but I enjoy doing it, so fuck you. Like yeah. I did uh, I did Ice Cube, I've done NWA, I did Problem, I did a couple Briggs songs. Like, So I think I'm going to start doing like some uh, some drum ones too, some drum rap covers. Yeah, I think that's um, I think that's cool to see. Even if I'm not into it, like when someone I'm following just posts something different, it it really it, then you know they're just doing it for the fun of it, and they're not just trying to have everyone love them on Instagram. Yeah, I mean, like it's pretty much a dead video. So like, I have to post. I try to post every day because that keeps the followers going. Because I'm constantly lo losing followers too, so yeah. I have to try to gain, gain more than I'm losing um but when i post a drum video like i had to get no new followers on it 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 doesn't do well but i do it anyway because it's fun and uh so dude I, I got a lot of hate when i when i post my first couple people are so butthurt at me they're like you're way better at guitar i'm like oh no shit <laughs> <laughs> like followers get like mad at you for doing something different like almost like they think you're doing everything to please them or it's like like really I'm never guitar again. I'm gonna play drums only. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. definitely worked up over that. They're like, that didn't sound good. I'm like, oh, no way. It was pretty yeah. good. It's always the people with five followers, a private account, zero posts, no profile picture. But they're always commenting hate. I try to. I used to get mad and then like be very analytical and like tell them why they're stupid, but that never works. And I don't want to go the doom route and just block every person who doesn't agree with me. So I've, I've tried to kind of make them like turn them around, basically flip them and make them like like my shit by kind of playing with them. And like uh, most of the time it works, man. And either if not, you're basically tricking them into commenting on your shit over and over. So exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when I would get like my first few followers, like, or like on any of our, I mean, not followers, haters, and like all of us would do this. We'd all jump on the hater and just, just <laughs> go full force on them. And now I just like, I just like laugh and say something witty that's just like funny and kind of makes them think they're stupid and they just don't have anything to say about it. Or I'll make it like self-deprecating, like, oh, you know what? I do suck. You're right. Yeah. And then they're, they don't know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. But, just be like, I should quit guitar. It is. <laughs> It is good fun when uh when Jay and like Chris and Steve are all shitting on someone like they might kill themselves. Yeah, that's how it used to be. It would get it would get like intense, especially when um Steve doesn't 
he um, he's not in like the the group anymore where we all talk but he would he would go full force on them he would go crazy on them <laughs> i fucking love that guy yeah he's hilarious and uh chris would get those uh those two girls to jump at them too <laughs> oh yeah I'd be like chris stick your army on them yeah he would, he would they would go all the way to their their page and start like like making fun of them and stuff I sent a selfie of me pooping to uh, to Steve yesterday. He liked it. Yeah, I still have I still have like the he would send his selfies and his salutes. I, I still have like the screenshots back from like May last year. So anyone watching who doesn't know what the fuck we're talking about, our buddy Steve would literally take a selfie of him shitting every day and send it to us. So shout out to Steve. Like all, yeah, shout out to Steve. S Steve. I would know. I would know. I'll notice once in a while. Like he'll just like he'll comment on like ten of my posts at once. Cause yeah. He's not, not very active on Instagram, but he'll just like comment like ten at once, and it just like makes me laugh so much. Chris, so, if you're, watching this, I love you. Wait, what? What was that? I said, Chris, if you're watching this, I love you. Oh yeah, I I uh told him about the YouTube channel, and he um. I told him about the one with the guy from Ex Mortis and stuff, and Peyton. I think he watched those two. So I'm not sure. Definitely subscribe, but Peyton is like the polite, the most polite guy I've ever met. Yeah, he's such a sweetheart. Yeah, Peyton doesn't even get any haters. You can't. I know. Him. So nice. Yeah, he'll he'll just like he'll say like he'll he'll just probably reply and say thank you. <laughs> it's too nice. Thank you for watching my video, man. <laughs> yeah, another thing is I'll get like like a whole bunch of like. It happens all the time, like, 12-year-old kids that, like, see, I'll post, like, a riff on my story of just, like, me jamming, and they'll be, like, battle me with guitars, and I'm, like, oh. and everyone, everyone wants to do, like, guitar competitions, and I'm, like, I'm not doing this to compete, I'm just, it's just for fun. Right, yeah, there's tons of people on Instagram who are better than me, so I'm just trying to be different, not better. They all just, like, they all comment, they all, they'll, like, reply and, like, tell me to play corn and, like, Slipknot, or they'll just tell me, like, that do a guitar battle then they'll like call me a baby for not wanting to do it <laughs> i just like i just like send like a laughing face because it's just hilarious uh omar j guitar that guy fucking rips he's better than me um axe insight that guy fucking rips he's better than me um chris is better than me. mike yeah fuck chris though yeah yeah he's a he's too hairy he's not even on instagram yeah i mean he's he has his this is a little private stalker account that he'll send doesn't even play guitar. Yeah, so there's, there's a whole lot of people on Instagram that are just crazy good. Like, yeah. I'm like, how are you? How are you not like famous with millions of followers? Yeah, I see that. But then, like, if you go back and check on them, you definitely see them growing faster than someone who sucks balls. Yeah, exactly. But then you' not going to name anyone. You see people who suck and don't tune their guitar and. <laughs> horrible audio and they get tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of views and get famous people to follow and comment on their stuff there's something to be said about like gimmicks though you know what i mean yeah so like if you have like a niche gimmick or audience then i guess your sound quality doesn't really matter because people are kind of wanting to see like an anomaly you know what i mean yeah exactly i think maybe that's it people just think it's funny when they see someone who just really, <laughs> I people just think it's funny. <laughs> Maybe I'll I'll see someone like like no no offense to anyone that does this, but I'll see someone like cover like like one of my favorite Machine Head songs or something, and it's just like it's just like when it's out of tune, it's the worst because you see them playing it like perfectly, but it's just so out of tune. It's just like tuning your guitar takes like five seconds. <laughs> i've gotten i've gotten hate though like from um i think it's like metallica fans featured or something like back like way back in like august of last year when i covered a metallica song and my e string was like a hair out of tune like mm -hmm. barely out of tune i don't know how people catch this especially with the backing track but every comment was this guy sucks his guitar is out of tune i was just That's like true. oh wow I, was, I wasn't in the fucking studio man calm down yeah <laughs> It's like, I don't even know how people catch it. It's like one string is barely out of tune. Mm -hmm. like if if the if it's wildly out of tune, I get that. But right, right. Yeah, that's crazy. 
Yeah, but that, that pretty much wraps everything up. This was a blast. Look what I got here. Oh, that's insane looking. Yeah, you know who this is? That. I know this it's a savage pick. This is an Uncle Sasquatch pick, dude. Oh, that's his? Yeah. Did he send them to you or did Savage give you some? No, he sent me them. Oh, wow. Yeah. Does he? I wonder what ever happened to him if he told all his endorsements about him quitting. Yeah, they were all cool with it. Like, I, I had a talk with him about it, and he talked to him, and they understood. And it was pretty much like, well, you know, you fulfilled your side, and we fulfilled ours, so we're done here, and it's good. He was, I think he was, I think Savage was the only thing he was endorsed by. It's not like he had a bunch of companies that were supporting him. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was he was with Mathis, too. Oh, oh yeah, was he? Because he yeah. played. Did he just like wear their stuff or? Yeah, it's the same thing I do. Like I talked to Jason about it, and Jason's pretty much like, if you want to get a pick endorsement, that's fine. But like, he's pretty much just promoting you through the t-shirts and stuff like that. So it's the same deal we have. Yeah, because it's like uh, um, with me and him, it's like a pick thing. Like I, I love the picks; they're insane. Better. I think I was using like the, the Dunlop Jazz Three. I think they were the John Petrucci picks, and they were they were good, but like after like a few days, they'd start wearing down, and right, but like they're like five bucks for like six picks too. So my signature pick should be done pretty soon here. So we're gonna do like the same that Peyton did, except it's gonna be half red, half blue, like my logo. Oh yeah, um, yeah, it looks sick. Yeah, it should be done in the next couple weeks. Um, and Mathis, dude, that's super cool to see because I've been with Mathis since he had like. One or two thousand followers. Yeah, is he? Does he sell the guitars, or are those still a thing? Yeah, that's in, yeah. I'm, he sells them. He's just like redoing his whole stock right now. So like he's redoing all the models. Yeah, I would love to see like a Mathis V or something. That'd be sick. Because yeah. he's at like a twenty k now. Oh uh, yeah, he's gotten pretty big. I think even uh, last summer when. Um, I think it was a little bit before summer when he hit me up and he started sending me pics. He was like, only had a few thousand. So that's like crazy growth. Right. Yeah. Like uh, me and him, I met up with him at NAM. He was really cool. Yeah. And do, the, like, do the savage pics, do they uh, wear down at all or do they stay pretty good? Um, I play a lot and they, they eventually wear down, but they're, they're not unusable once they wear down. Like th this one's probably my favorite, this fucking thick white one. Oh, that's thick. How many millimeters is that? Um, I think this one's like four. Oh, but they they uh they get uh smaller and sharper down. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's tapered. Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, like my my math is picks. They start when they are where I have one from like last year, like the first one of the first ones they sent me, and it's like it's pretty weird down because I've been using it for like a year, but it's still I can still play with it comfortably. Yeah, I mean. Those Mathis picks for the price are killer because, like, they, they play really well and they're way better than, like, Nunlop or, like, Hole Punch picks. But, like, Savage being handmade, there's not much. You can't really beat a handmade pick with Hole yeah. Punch pick. You know what I'm saying? But, so, yeah, it's just different tiers of, of what you want to pay for. So it's kind of the same as my Black Star being awesome, but it's not going to sound as good as a fucking 6505, you know? But there's a large price gap. Oh, you there? Yeah, someone tried calling me. I accidentally accepted. <laughs> yeah. Did it go black for a second? Yeah, I just kept talking. I was like, oh, I'll, I'll steal this ship. We're good. They, they keep calling. Me. All right, yeah, that's probably my cue to end this. So. All second. right, man. Well, thank you yeah. for having me on. A little blast. Yeah. Um, you guys, for the people who's watching, uh, tomorrow I should be doing it with. Mike Score, vocalist of All Out War, and um, the one with Phil Demel still in the works. He messaged me saying he's trying to figure out time, so that should be coming in the next few weeks. So, pretty psyched about that. Yeah, tell him Matt says hi, dude. Yeah, I totally will. And um, and be like, who the fuck's that? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, shout outs, follow Mathis Guitars. That's yeah, that's their Instagram. Awesome picks, awesome guitars. Sixty second metal. Ant metal guitar. Um, I can't name everyone. I'll run out of time. Yeah, that was a blast talking with you.